All right. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yes, I do try to make videos outside the new resolution ones. I got one comment saying I don't. I will try this year. Um, you saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. You know what to expect. But before we take a look at uh, 6,000 GPU, I'd also take a few minutes to talk about some updates here at the Chai Studio. I've spent some time upgrading a lot of stuff. So I'll take a few minutes to talk about that. Use retention as well uh, to talk about the GPU later in the video. But if you want to jump forward and just look at that, feel free to do so. Uh, Timestamps are there. So the first thing I want to talk about is this insanely large monitor uh, that I have now. It is a LG C2. OLED is OLED. It's like one of those things that you don't know how good they are until you experience it and then you just can't go back. The second nice thing about this uh, TV is it has 120 hertz refresh rate. So when I connect it to my gaming rig, I get a very nice pop-up saying it has NVIDIA G-Sync enabled. In that moment, I just feel like an absolute baller. Uh, I feel like uh, this is it. I made it. I really enjoy uh, this monitor. I think it's it's really helped my productivity. It really helps with video editing a lot as well. Um, and I got it at a really good deal. So <laughs> that makes up for it. The second thing I want to talk about is this camera. Uh, I want to show you before and after. So let's take a look at that. This is a Sony camera. It's a Sony cinema cinema camera. And I also got this on a really good deal. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. I think this really makes the final version of the camera that I ever wanted. That brings us to the topic of this video. It's right in the front and center of Proton Super now. Uh, the 6000 Ada Lovelace GPU. Here's your first look. Yeah, after uh, I took it out of the box, took it out of uh, these two ESG shields, this was the peel I got. This GPU is a blow style GPU, which means it's really thin. And in this video, I'll just be talking about my first impressions of it. Uh, I got this right around Christmas. I'm sure you saw the tweet. And I've had it about for two weeks now. Um, these are just sort of first impressions. I've run a lot of benchmarks, but that'll be in the next video. So get subscribed for that. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying all the YouTube, all the YouTube tricks, right? Retention, uh, future teasers, whatnot. Let's see how it works out. But uh, if you look at the aesthetics, the design aesthetics, even if you looked at uh, the A6000, it's very similar to that. And the branding is almost minimal. It just says NVIDIA on the side and the name of the GPU. And it has this really beautiful jet black finish. So if you remember the iPhone 7 release, although I didn't get the jet black, I actually now really happen to like this finish, which is a shiny, uh, glossy black finish on the front. I was afraid it would be a fingerprint magnet. Uh, it's not. And I, I didn't even need to wipe the GPU clean. So it has this really beautiful aesthetic. The reason I really like blow GPUs now is, as you know, I'm working on this article about multi GPUs. And I think uh, it's impossible to fit more than three of regular cards into a case uh, without having like all sorts of hack together. So the nice thing about blower GPUs is you can stack them really close together and they just work fine. This card is no exception. Uh, it also, I think looks really good. So this is on the new power convention that NVIDIA is trying to switch everyone over to, which means it, ha it has this new connector. So if you bought a very new power supply, you could just have one wire going into a GPU. Or if you don't uh, like me, you would have to plug the converter in, which makes it slightly larger. Um, but I think that's true to all my cards, so that's fine. The reason uh, this really stands out is if you look at my 3090 next to it, you'll really see the difference, right? It's it's really a slot or two slots wide, which means you can plug a GPU just in the slot that comes after this one, and you can really stack them together. I've run a lot of thermal benchmarks, a lot of speed comparisons. 
the thermal benchmarks are absolutely fine uh, even stacked together this gpu can really hold its temperature and uh, basically you don't have to worry about air flow with these cards spec wise i'll have it linked uh, in the show notes somewhere the pricing in of this card in the us uh, i'm not really sure but i've seen it fluctuate between 7 and a half to 9000 dollars somewhere in that range this card has about 80% more CUDA cores compared to the A6000 and these are also upgraded to the newer generation. So raw performance wise you can expect quite a nice boost. The most powerful thing about this GPU is the fact that it has 48 gigs of VRAM. The fact that it can fit all of that VRAM in this size and if you look at it next to a 3090 right it's it's to me, it's still confusing. I've been collecting GPUs like Pokemons all my life at this point, And it's still crazy how much compute it can really pack. And the other thing is, a 4090 can go up to 500 watts in power consumption. And we, when you put two of them together, they cause a lot of power spikes, famously. With a quarter card, you never expect that. And this actually only consumes 300 watts, which is the same as the older generation. So in that sense, it's uh, you really don't even need an expensive power supply. <laughs> you can just have one or two of these and you're sorted, right? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot to say about this when it comes to benchmarks, a lot to say about speed ups uh, when it comes to it. But for large language models, uh, as I said earlier, 48 gigs is <laughs> pretty much key. Uh, I don't, you can barely fit a 7 billion model on a 3090 and even then you're just on the verge of out of memory. Uh, you have to come up with tricks. You have to enable, I think, gradient accumulation for 13 billion. Without that, I don't think it even fits. Here, you have a lot of breathing room, right? And if you're trying to fine tune these models or if you're trying to work with these large models, it's pretty great. Uh, it's also great for other AI models, but let's be honest, I'm I'm only focused on LLMs these days, so that's that's what I'll mention here. I'll talk a lot more about those benchmarks in the next video where I'll show some benchmarks that I've run on fine tuning. But in this video, I just wanted to share this experience of having my first impressions of this, uh, just having some thoughts on this. I have one complaint, one very serious complaint, uh, actually two of them. The first one is I wish this had a light on it. <laughs> I know it's crazy, right? Like look at my background, look at that RGB. Where's the RGB in this card, right? I wish at least there was like one little white light on it somewhere. I, I mean, I understand it's, the design makes it hard, the size makes it hard, but I would, have, I would be happy if it was slightly bigger in size, maybe length, I had that light. The other one is uh, the naming historically has been confusing, right? So this is the 6000 Ada Lovelace. And we had the RTX 6000 two generations ago, which was 24 gigs. So every with every release, NVIDIA, you guys change the naming convention. Uh, it's, it's just confusing, right? Like after 2080, we had a 3090 and a 4090. That made sense. But here we had a RTX 8000, then an A6000, and now a 6008 alone list. So maybe, maybe look into that. Uh, but I am thankful that I got this piece uh, as a, basically right on Christmas. So it ended up being a Christmas gift. Uh, I am going to put it to a lot of use this year, hopefully. And in the next video, I'll share some benchmarks on fine tuning LLMs and comparing this against the A6000, 13090, and 2390s. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.